So let's start today's topic. So my name is Juan, and today's topic is one step before game hackers in streaming Android emulators. Uh, so first, let me give a, a brief self-introduction. Uh, I am Chinese, and now I, but now I live and work in Japan. I work as a security engineer in a, corpor uh, in a company called DNA Corporation, which is uh, basically a mobile game company. Uh, personally, in private, I love playing games as well as hacking games. So this is today's agenda. Uh, before we start, I, may I know how many of you have ever played or like to play games, any kind of games? Oh, <laughs> almost all of you. I'm so motivated. Uh, so first, let me uh, introduce the background, the game cheating threat model. So we've defined three roles in the game cheating threat model, the users, the cheaters and the vendors, aka the game developers. So for PC games, all these three roles have the full control over their PCs. Uh, they have the permission to install or run privileged code. Uh, but on mobile devices, things is get a bit different. The users usually don't have a privileged access over their device devices unless they rooted or jailbroke their devices. And this is the same for game developers. Uh, on the other hand, the cheaters usually own a rooted or jailbroken device. You may, think, you may think, okay, then the cheaters must be the most powerful, nothing can stop them from cheating. But this does not mean the cheat cheaters are making profit. Actually, yes, the, it's true that the cheaters can hack on their own devices, but if they want to sell their cheat tools to the users, they will have to persuade their users to Firstly, to root or jailbreak their device firstly, which is not an easy task. So for cheaters, they think of an easy way to distribute their cheating tools, that is the emulators. Here I mean emulators like the commercial like emulators like Bluestacks, Nox, and so you may have heard of these emulators. And I don't mean the AVD from Android Studio. So, uh, AVD from Android Studio are basically for x86 emulation, or for uh, which is which does not support APK that is built for only ARM, uh, or you can build a for ARM emulation in AVD, but it's super slow. So uh, these commercial emulators like BlueStacks and Nox, they use they use a different technology called Houdini, which is developed by Intel. And I, I will introduce this further later, later. So for these commercial emulators, they have highly unified environment. So you don't need to tune your software, tune your uh, cheat tools for different firmware or for different API levels, etc. And what is better is that these emulators are usually very easy to root, and uh, they are, sh uh, or some of them are even shipped with a rooted environment in advance. So this is a Good news for the cheaters. Uh, so, according to my investigation, the most popular the most popular cheating approach on emulators is touch simulation. So, touch simulation requires uh, requires root privilege. It does require root privilege, but it does not involve modification or analysis of game of games binary. Uh, that also means touch simulation is a gray, gray zone uh, because you can, uh, you can say it is cheating, but you can hardly say it is, it is a crime, it is illegal because it does not modify the game data directly. So, uh, and the in interesting thing is that some touch simulation engine even have some, even have some advanced function like OCR or image recognition. Uh, on the other hand, you can see cheat by hooking uh, is not showing up on emulators. Uh, this is because game codes are usually uh, native, and on commercial emulators, uh, they use Houdini, as I, said, as I said, to translate ARM code to x86 at runtime. Uh, so this makes it difficult to hook on emulators than on a physical, pure ARM device. Uh, so here comes my Per research purpose. Uh, my purpose is to enable hooking on commercial Android emulators. 
so you can distribute your cheat tools more easy, easier. Uh, and this is the emulator targets I have investigated. Uh, they are blue. They are blue stacks, Nox, and Ladian. Uh, you can tear. You you can tear from this table uh, the Android version, and these this emulators are very much alike. They use similar Android versions, and also similar Houdini versions. So maybe it's, it's just a coincidence, but maybe not. Uh, this is not our concern. So let's move on to our next stage. If you try to run a command line binary on emulators, you will find uh, it will be executed properly. And this is because the emulators use a feature in Linux called binformat misc. Uh, with this feature, you can register a, a certain binary, binary signature or magic number uh, with a certain loader. So in our case, when the ARM binary comes to an emulator, you want to execute it on the emulator. Uh, as the as the slides shows, uh, the Houdini binary, the Houdini executable will be used to load this ARM binary, execute this ARM binary. In this case, it's easy, it's easy to inject your library to the target executable with LD preload feature, uh, and thus to perform a hooking from your injected library. Uh, however, there are other methods very popular used to uh, doing used to do hook like ptrace, but if you try to use x86 version ptrace, you won't make it work directly because you can't load your ARM live binary with the x86 DL open. And if you compile a uh, ARM version ptrace, uh, because the ARM version ptrace also will run on the emulators, uh, but you still you will find you will still fail here because. Uh, in fact, the P trace is very much dependent on the registers on architectures. So Houdini, it seems Houdini seems to fail to translate ARM's uh, P trace correctly to x86 versions P trace. So this also doesn't work. Uh, but anyway, at least we have the LD preload feature work. So we can. So can we use also use LD preload feature to? inject your library to a Java application, not a command line application? So the answer is no, and I will show why the answer is no in the following slides. Uh, so this is a normal Java application startup process. Uh, it is well known that there is a process called Zygote in Android, and every Java application is forked from it. The basic process is that Zygote runs a loop, and when a startup request comes from Activity Manager, uh, the Zygote will fork itself and initialize Houdini. You can see Zygote process is initialized where before launching the application. So setting LD preload environment variable before launching such an application will cause no change. Uh, anyway, Android, in fact, they, uh, it provides a workaround to enable LD pre preload feature uh, when you start a Java application. So it's called the wrap system property. So you can read, set the wrap system property to LD preload equal the library you want to inject. And uh, when you set this wrap property, the start process is a little bit different. So the, this time the zygote is still listen, listening uh, at the socket and ready to fork itself whenever a startup request comes. But when it forked itself in the child process, Instead of initialize the application, it executes uh, the app process binary with share. So of course, when you are executing com a command with share, the share will first for firstly fork itself. So the relation among these this processes uh, will finally look, look like this picture. So the direct parent of the application process is actually share instead of zygote. Uh, and this is the uh, this is the detail of the core stack. Uh, you will see after zygote forked itself, a function called exit, exit application will be called. In this function, it concatenates some command line strings and executed with share. You can see that the app process binary is executed by share with hyphen hyphen application parameters here. 
So, so it looks fine that if you work, uh, if you start the app with your app with React property, you can take adv advantage of LD preload. But actually, if you look if you look carefully uh, to this command line, so this command this command is this share command is the final share command when you start an application by setting the wrap pr property. Uh, so look carefully the the system the system being share this binary is x86 version and the library you intended to inject is ARM version. So this actually won't do the trick. It won't load your ARM version's binary uh, to your target process. So, so in order to inject an ARM library, I'm afraid we have to investigate more about how Houdini work, how Houdini work on emulators. Uh, so uh, again, this is the this is the how zygote, zygote start. Is this is the common this is the common for both Android five and Android four, uh, which are used on this commercial em emulators version, the AOS version. Uh, I won't go into detail in of this of this core stack, but note that Houdini uh, still haven't in interacted with this part yet. Uh, and after the application startup. Uh, the application startup request from activity manager is received the zygote fork itself, and it's here that the Houdini is initialized. From the Android 5 and from here, the Android 5 and Android 4 behave different. For Android 5, here is the Android 5 picture. Houdini is initialized by by the function called is marked red. Uh, it's called initialized native bridge. Uh, in fact, there is another stage called pre-initialized phase, but let's just ignore it for simplicity. Uh, so what initialize bridge, what this function do is very simple. It just registers some callbacks to a structure called native bridge callbacks. So note there are two functions, very important. It's called load library and get trample line. You can consider it, you, see, you can consider them as the, uh, as the ARM versions DR open and DR sim. So each time the Java layer want to load a library, it will call, uh, ARM library, it will call this, these functions to uh, and without handle the different of architecture. Uh, so if you look at libhoudini.so file, you will find a structure called native bridge interface is exported, and some po function pointers are there. So these function pointers will eventually be registered to the this native bridge callback structure. Uh, on the other way, on the other hand, the for Android four for Android four version. Uh, with DVM, so at that time uh, the de Android developers still didn't they didn't uh, consider they haven't considered the cross-platform impl implementations. They didn't expect their Android will run on an x86 version uh, device. So in this case, you have to modify the DVM DVM's code yourself. Uh, how you modify it is quite simple. So there is a DVM load native code. Uh, there and you can insert a function called who hook dr open Houdini hook dr open and what this function do is quite straightforward. It will first first they call the x86 versions dr open to open the uh, library and if this dr open failed, it will init Houdini and use Houdini's dr open and Houdini's dr open is this is marked as Red is called actually its name is DVM two HD DR open and there is also a function similar to DRSIM is called DVM two HD DRSIM and these are these functions are registered in Houdini init hook init. Uh, so uh, this is basically how Houdini is initialized in emulators and uh, during my investigations I found some uh, interesting facts. So there are, uh, as far as I know, Intel does not, so Houdini is developed by Intel, and Intel actually does not provide commercial license for Houdini library publicly. So uh, as, a, as you can see, uh, there is another emulator, very famous emulator called Genymotion, which is also super famous, but not included in my research. 
uh, because it is not bundled with the Houdini when released in order to avoid the violence of the Intel license. Uh, instead, it will hint you to download the Houdini binary yourself somewhere after you download their software emulations. Uh, so this is if not efficient for users, so Genmotion is not a main cheating platform. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you can see BlueStacks, it is using Hoodini, Houdini, it is using Houdini while released, uh, and deliberately or not, it seems that it's trying to hide the Houdini by the race. So if you, uh, if you look at the reverse, the uh, by libdvm.so file in BlueStacks, you can find a code like it's trying to DL open a library called lib3btrans.so, and if this DL open fail, it will tell you lib Houdini libraries load is failed. It does not consist cons consistent. So actually, this lib3btrans.so is libhoudini.so, so they somehow want to uh, hide it. Uh, and uh, for Nox, they packed the libdvm.so file, but if you unpack it, it's basically doing the same thing as BlueStacks. Uh, so that next, let's go into the let's go to the hooking uh, hooking stuff. So there are very many famous hooking frameworks existed, like Exposed, Frida, and Substrate, some typical ones. So Exposed um, usually is only used for Java applications uh, hooking, but I will talk this later to use Expose to uh, utilize to enable uh, native hooking. So, and the second one, uh, the Expose uh, works by substitute the app process, and uh, it will load its own Java files in this modified app process. And when Zygote fork itself, uh, so all of the it makes sure that all of the applications forked from Zygote will load the the jar file in advance. So, and another one is Frida, and Frida is the is my personally is my favorite hooking framework, is instrumentation framework. Uh, so it's it more almost can do everything. You can use it to instrument on your desktop on iOS on Android, and you can use it to instrument the Java layer, and you can use it to instrument the native layer. So, but the bad thing for cheaters, they don't want to use Frida. The cheaters don't want to use Frida because uh, Frida act uh, Frida act as a client side and a server side. So you have to basically you have to connect your PCs with USB to your device and use your PCs to control the behavior of your device. So you can't develop a uh, cheat tools by Frida and. Uh, Distribute it to your users easily. You will require your it will require your user to plug your USB properly and have a rooted form and have a PC. So it's not preferable for cheaters. And what's more, the uh, Frida said the, the author said they won't support emulators instrumentation in a foreseeable future. It's not their priority, and this is on their GitHub's issues. Uh, and Substrate is kind of, uh, it's also a good one, works on Android. Uh, it works by fake the liblog.so file, so every Java, Java application will load this fake liblog.so file uh, to achieve the injection. So, but it's kind of outdated. It only works up to Android 4.4, if I recall correctly, and uh, if you want to make it use with emulate, make it work with emulators, you have to do some modification yourselves. So here comes my my proposal. So uh, no, this is the normal approach for how do you do hooking. So it, besides beside the LD preload trick, you can also do hooking using ptrace, right? So the basic idea is to use ptrace to attach to your target process and call the DL open in, inside of the target process to load your injection library, and in the injection library, you would uh, modify the function the function entry point. Uh, so that's the ho hooking part. So for, so on an emulator, it's only one step, it's only one step further to do hooking. 
So it's the same first you p use ptrace to attach the x86 version's ptrace to attach to your target process. And uh, you call the uh, open to load uh, x86 versions, your x86 versions injection library. And inside your, inside your x86 versions uh, library, you can find, you can load the lib the uh, libhoudini.so and to find the libhoudini.so's dear open uh, inside it and use this dear open to open your ARM version's injection library and inside this um, this real ARM injection library that you can hook your fun you can do your hook hooking works so uh, so my implement implementation is based on this A method, but after I implemented it, I found there is a, there is another process, uh, there is another way to achieve th achieve this goal. So you can utilize expose. So expose expose base basically it works for x uh, x86 Android Android versions, uh, and uh, uh, so the key. The key point to hook on emulator is to inject your, the most difficult thing is to inject your ARM library to the target process. So as, and being aware that Exposed has already enabled you to inject uh, Java code to the target pr process, so you can take the advantage of this feature to call system load library in the, inside the target process with the help of uh, ex Exposed. So note that the, the system dot load library function will take care of the architecture dependent uh, native library, so you won't you don't even have to know how Houdini works, how emulator works to load the ARM or x86 versions library. So you can just call it uh, using exposed. So after after you load your native library, uh, it's successfully injected to the your target process, and then you can do hooking hooking works to inside the your native library so this is my tools my github my tools to uh, uh, hook on the emulators and uh, uh, it's it's based on the method a i didn't i didn't make one based on method b and this the usage is as simple as hook by a uh, hook you can pass the library and uh, the target address to the to this hook by address function or hook by name function, and you can hook it. Uh, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you a demo, but uh, you don't mm, uh, don't don't expect this demo to be so fantastic because it's on a demo game, and the demo game is basically made by our company for training purpose and. Definitely, I can't doing a, I can't do a demo f on a on a real game product. It's illegal. I will be <laughs> I will got caught. So uh, I can only perform this on a on a demo game. So this this is the yeah typical uh, typical cute kawaii characters in in Japan. Huh? Oh, sorry. So first, you you are fighting the boss, and the boss SP uh, barely barely subtract, and you of course you lost, you lose, and uh, this is this this is on the emulator of uh, the Nox emulator. So and you use ADB shear, you use ADB shear to connect to the emulator and play this stage again. Uh, seems you are still losing, but. But after, but you can find the result uh, is actually win. So finally, 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 this the this is the conclusion for today. So mobile game is getting more and more popular, as well as cheating developing. And uh, cheating pat patterns change as a technique developers. So I am uh, I am expecting the cheating patterns will become more popular on Android, and there are more people using hooking skills on emulators instead of 
only merely touch simulation, uh, the primitive method. So, uh, but of course, so in order to uh, in order to uh, prepare ourselves as a game company, pre prepare ourselves for this kind of cheating, we should do some further uh, like firm further work like emulator dete detections or some doing some other efforts uh, in the future. So and uh, finally, game security is fun, and I'm so happy to meet with so many ga guys that is that like plays games or maybe also like hacking games. So thank you. Any questions?